not have many of them, but the BBC is undeniably a global brand, a flagship broadcaster both nationally and globally. And it's one of Britain's most significant cultural institutions. Its ubiquity, the fact that it's everywhere, means that it's easy to forget just how important it is in so many people's lives. We learn from it, we trust it, we shout at it, we laugh with it, and of course, we pay for it. Which prompts some pretty fundamental questions. Should it be radically reshaped? Should it be smaller? Should it stay the same? What should the BBC look like in 10 years' time? Provided the BBC is able to demonstrate in its programming that it is providing enough excellence uh, and enough of a connection to its audience, the economies of scale which derive from the BBC now and should derive in 10 years' time by being able to demonstrate these kind of connections with these kind of programs justifies, in my view, both the scale of the licence fee and its compulsory nature. If you replaced the licence fee with a subscription service, uh, I am as convinced as I can be you would end up with far less generated British content and it would cost you a great deal more money. Cut costs um, by moving the whole corporation to Manchester, essentially. Um, put some of it in other regions, almost all of it in Manchester, and only leave in London what could only be done in London, which is basically news and current affairs and elements thereof. I see the point you're making from a sort of an argumentative, uh, from an argumentative standpoint, that we'll just move the BBC to Manchester. Are you serious about that? And if you are, what's your time scale? I am serious. I mean, it's, it's an argumentative point, but I think the fundamental principle of taking the BBC to the regions is absolutely well made. Anybody who loves the BBC feels passionate about it both passionately pro and passionately against, but I could not imagine life without it. BBC has to keep a market share of the mainstream uh, audiences, but I feel that it should concentrate less on that and trying to compete with the ITV or Sky or channels like that. They really have to make sure their peak time and prime areas are ones they actually retain and improve the quality of and then begin accepting that actually maybe they can't provide high quality 24 hours across five platforms. I think the core and most important objective of the BBC going forward is to be a trusted and reliable source of news and information in the internet age. I think in the internet age, when the World Wide Web is that well-known home of rumour and paranoia and madness, to have a trusted voice is more important than it's ever been in bef before. Is there really any purpose, do you think, any longer in the BBC seeking to maintain in-house documentary, comedy, drama? Wouldn't they be better buying it from the market and giving the market that sort of stimulus as a result? I think there's a very, very strong argument for it making those sorts of programmes in-house, but I question at what level uh, uh, and at what size. Assume that there was no licence fee and it was a voluntary subscription. Well, you know, 29% of people said they would pay nothing. I mean, basically, it used to break up a third, a third, a third. A third thought the licence fee, a third thought advertising because they think that's free, right. and a third thought subscription. Uh, actually, interestingly, advertising and subscription have gone down, and the licence fee, and I think it's because the licence fee is regarded as better value for money, and those re people recognise we're making it better value for money.